This is a coronavirus particle. Unfortunately for our virtual patient, it has just exited a human host cell, ready to wreak havoc on the next one. Let's take a look at the situation in the cell that gave it birth. Sadly, almost every piece of machinery you see here is on Team COVID. The proteins produced by the system have helped convert one particle into many and eject immense volumes of viral particles into the host. But where do these proteins come from? What mechanisms underlie this conversion from one to many? In this video, we look at the replication processes so central to the life cycle of the novel coronavirus. Though the virus is initially outside the host cell, our journey starts a bit later. We begin once it's shed its envelope and its core material has entered the cell. The core material contains a nucleocapsid protein layer, which quickly dissociates to expose the viral RNA. The viral genome is composed mostly of two large open reading frames, 1A and 1B. For now, just these two are relevant. The viral RNA is positive sense and single-stranded. This means that it can directly bind to ribosomes that are happy to translate it with no reverse transcription involved. When both ORF1A and B are translated, the product is polyprotein PP1AB, which contains non-structural proteins from 1 to 16. Importantly, these NSPs cannot fulfill their function until separated. This is why two special proteins within that chain, NSP3 and 5, are capable of cleaving polyprotein links. They act on these polypeptide chains to form 16 smaller NSPs, 1 through 16. As an example, you see here how the main protease cleaves off a bond between NSP7 and 8 with its active site. Now, this cleavage is what produces free proteins, which then carry out viral function. Preventing this cleavage can be equivalent to stopping the virus in its tracks. You can see here how an inhibitor, C13B, binds to the active site of the main protease, doing exactly that. Now that the first set of NSPs is ready, what next? Well, now the NSPs get to work, rapidly increasing the viral content within the host cell. They form replicase transcriptase complexes where several NSPs are busy replicating both sense and antisense viral RNA and transcripting its entirety. These RTCs attach to the rough ER membrane for stability and immune defense against the host cell. Now, the main replicase is formed by NSP12 in complex with NSP7 and 8. A catalytic dyad of D760 and D761 forms the active sites, where the light blue residues showing structural motifs that assist and guide the viral RNA to the active site. This replication is a key step in viral proliferation in the cell. If the replication complex can somehow be stopped, the virus would take a massive hit. This brings us to the inhibitor remdesivir, currently authorized for emergency use. If we now look at the same NSP12 complex bound to RNA, we see that it adds on nucleotides one by one, but remdesivir interrupts this process by covalently binding to the previous nucleotide and stopping replication. Unfortunately, viruses are crafty. Stop them in one way, and they'll probably just mutate around it. However, there are three stages in COVID's life cycle beyond the ones discussed in this video. Combined effort into all of these stages can allow us to develop treatments that impact multiple fronts and get rid of it before it gets the chance to mutate. But till that day comes, follow your local COVID guidelines, and of course, don't forget to wash your hands.